Hi traders and coders, my name is Matthew from PineScript Mastery and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to use the plot function. I'm going to cover all of the function parameters that we have to work with and really give you a thorough insight into how the plot function works. Hey coders, welcome to the plot function lesson. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain the plot function in great detail and explain what all of these input arguments do and how to use them in your own scripts. So for this demonstration, I'm going to leave overlay to false so that we have our own indicator box here. That'll make it easy to see what is happening to this line as we manipulate it. So as always, if you hover your mouse over the plot function name, you'll get a list of the possible input variables. Here we have 13 input variables. I'll explain what they all do one by one. And if by the end of this lesson you still have questions, then just simply hold Control or Command and click on the function name and you'll get a full description of what this function does. Now the plot function only has one required input, meaning that we only have to give it one value before it'll work. All of the other input variables are optional and the required input is a series. So this could be an open, close, high, low, or any other series of price variables. So you could also plot indicator values. So here we have an EMA, 50 EMA. And we can plot that to the chart as well if we want to, like so. So let's go over the other input variables. The next one we have to work with is title. So this is the title of the plot, I hit save. I come up to the options menu you can see that it is now being renamed to this is the title and we can change the color of it uh, and the style of the plot so you could change it to an area histogram circles whatever you'd like so i'm going to leave this title variable in while we go over the next few input variables just so that we can see it in the settings menu when we go up to adjust things so the next optional input we have is a color. So if you type in color equals and then type color full stop and then control space, here is the list of colors you can choose from. So we could change it to purple if you wanted to hit save and it will change the color of our line. The next option we have is the line width. So if I type in line width equals and we could set this to by default, this is set to one. So if I hit save, this won't change but you can change this all the way up to four. And the higher you go, the thicker the line will be. So the next input variable is style. So if you type in style and then plot dot control space, here is a list of styles we can choose from. Now this is the same list you'll get from this uh, formatting dialog here. So there's a bunch of different styles you can choose from. For example, we could turn this into a columns indicator. If we hit save, this will now be drawn as columns, just like a volume indicator or something like that. And so I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if you get time, you can come in here and play around with these different formatting styles and see what you prefer for whatever you're working on. The next optional input variable is whether or not to track the price. So if we type track price, if you set this to true and hit save, you can see that it now draws a horizontal price line at the last value. The next input variable is transparency. So if you type in trans and you set this to say 50, then the line will be 50% transparent. As you can see, this does not affect the horizontal track price line. The next input variable we can choose from is hist base, which is short for histogram base. So if we type in hist base, this will be the base price that our columns and histograms draw from. So if we set this to say 0 0.68 cents, and change our plot style to columns. We save the script. You can see that the histogram base is now 68 cents. And whenever price goes below it, the columns are drawn to the downside. And whenever price is above it, it's drawn to the upside. So I'm going to start a new line here so that we don't go off the page. And the next input variable we can work with is called offset. Now offset tells PineScript how many bars to shift the current plot left or right. So a negative value will shift it to the left, a 
and a positive value will shift it to the right. So if we wanted to shift this current closing price plot back 10 bars, then we'd simply type in negative 10. Hit save, and then this plot should move back 10 bars. Like so. If you wanted to move it 10 bars forward, just put in a positive value, in this case, positive 10. Hit save, and it will now draw at the end of the chart here. And you can go as far back as negative 9999, and that will shift the plot all the way to the start of the chart. And now all we have on our chart is our horizontal price line. I'll set this to zero for now, and we'll continue onwards. The next input variable is called join, and it's a Boolean. So if we, by default, this is set to false, but if we set this to true, it will now join any plotted shapes we have on our chart. So this only works with the style cross and style circles. So if we type in here, style underscore cross, and hit save, you can see it now draws a line connecting all of these crosses. If we change this to circles, it will also draw a line connecting all of these circles. So I'll set this back to a line and set this to false. And we'll go over the next input variable, which is editable. Editable tells PineScript whether or not the user can adjust the uh, formatting settings for this plotted line. By default, this is set to true. So if you come up into the settings menu, you can change the style of the plot and the color. But if we set this to false and save the script, now there is no settings option at all because we cannot change the, uh, now we cannot edit the plot style or color. So I'll change this back to true and we'll go over the next input variable, which is show underscore last. Now by default, this input argument isn't used, but what it does is it tells PineScript how many bars back to draw this plot. So if we set this to 10 and hit save, it only plots our line over the past 10 bars and anything beyond that is not plotted to the chart. So I'll change this to say 100 save it and you can see it draws back over the past 100 bars now the final input argument is called display now there's only two options we can choose from here and that is display dot all or none if we hit none then this plot will not be drawn to the chart we still get the number in the top left here but the line itself is not drawn to our chart if we change this back to all then it will come back onto our chart. And another way of achieving this is to just set the transparency to 100%. If we hit save, it has the same effect, except now we have our horizontal price line being drawn to the chart. Whereas displayed on none removes all of our drawings, all of our plotting. So this is useful for plotting graphical information to the chart that you don't want the user to see, but you want to be able to read the value up here next to the indicator name. So that brings us to the end of the plot lesson. And hopefully now you have a firm understanding of all the different variables you can work with when plotting data to your chart. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found that helpful. If you did and you want to learn more about PineScript, head over to pinescriptmastery.com. Here you'll find my advanced PineScript courses and my basics course, which is free. So if you want to learn more about PineScript, head over here and you'll find out a little bit more about me and a little bit more about PineScript. I hope you found this lesson interesting and helpful. I'll see you in the next one.